This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all kinds of Photoshop and Lightroom goodness, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to Facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Hi everyone, Mike Hoffman here, and thank you for joining me for part two of our exploration of 3D in Photoshop CS6. If you haven't already watched part one of this series, I'd encourage you to go back and take a look. And in that episode, we introduced you to the 3D workspace in Photoshop and talked about some of the basic tools and concepts. Today we're going to focus on creating 3D primitives or 3D objects within Photoshop CS6 using just the basics that are available to us here. And what I've got is a grid pattern on a layer above a background. And this grid pattern has some variety in the color. So as we create our 3D objects, you'll be able to see how this texture is mapped onto the 3D. So with this layer selected, we can go to the 3D menu, and one of the options that we have immediately available is to create a new 3D extrusion from this layer. Now we're going to talk a lot about extrusions in the next episode of this series, but for now, let's go ahead and create this. And when we do, the first thing that we're going to be asked is if we want to switch to the 3D workspace. And again, we'll say yes, as we usually do. And remember that you have the ability to create your own custom 3D workspace here in Photoshop CS6. So if you're interested in doing that, make sure to go back to episode one and you'll see how we created that. Now with a 3D extrusion created, and I've got the move tool selected, I can move this scene around and we can see that that layer has been extruded outwards and the texture is mapped only onto the front face. Actually, it's also mapped onto the back face. Meanwhile, the sides, which are the extrusions, have just a plain old 50% gray texture applied. And part of what we'll be doing in a future exercise is learning how to add materials to those textures. So that is the simplest way, just simply extruding an existing layer. So we'll undo that, but we'll look at some of the other options. Again, under the 3D menu, with this layer selected, we can create a new mesh from the layer, and we can create a postcard. Now, a postcard has some similarity to a 3D extrusion, except that it has no depth at all. If we turn this around sideways, we'll see that the postcard is essentially has a zero thickness. And these objects can be useful for catching reflections and for catching shadows and so forth as you create your 3D scenes. So we'll undo that again. And again, with this layer selected, we'll go under the 3D menu, new mesh from layer, and then we'll look at the mesh presets. And here we have a bunch of graphics primitives, typical things that you might see in any 3D programs such as cones, cubes, cylinders, and donuts. And if we, for example, choose cylinder, we'll see that, again, this layer becomes the texture that's wrapped around the outside of the cylinder. And if we tilt it upwards, we can see that the top and bottom are, again, that 50% gray color. So we've got extra top and bottom materials that can be assigned with other values in the future. And we'll see how to do that. Again, as we see, this texture is wrapped all the way around. If we grab this light, I'm going to select the infinite light here in our 3D panel, and we can drag the light around, and you can see that that texture is wrapped all the way around, and we've got a seam right here where one edge meets the other. So we'll move that out of the way, and we'll undo that. Okay, so we're back to our basic file. And now if we go here again under 3D, New Mesh from Layer, Mesh Preset, we can see also there are some odd choices here, such as Soda and Hat. And I've never actually had to use Hat in any one of my compositions, but it's there and it's available. For example, if we pick Soda, we can see that it's somewhat like a cylinder, but it's a little bit more shaped like a soda can. If we tilt it around, we can see it actually quite nice and the texture again is wrapped around the outside with a seam on one edge. We'll undo that and you can experiment with this and you can 
try all these different mesh presets and see what it gets you. Now these 3D objects that we've been creating here with this menu have all been created from the layer. And I'll point out here that in the 3D panel, you also have the ability to do the same thing. So with no 3D object selected in the layers panel and just a layer selected, we can choose to create a new 3D object and choosing the source, we can choose selected layer. And again, here we have the ability to create the 3D postcard, the 3D extrusion, or the mesh from preset with all of the same options. So this is another way to duplicate the same functionality that we find up here in the 3D menu. So if you prefer working with a panel, you've got it here. If you prefer working with the menu, you've got it here. Now, as you can see, there are more things that we can work with besides a selected layer. For example, a work path. We'll move this out of the way and we'll go over here to the custom shape tool. And I've got a heart shape selected. Let's we'll drag this heart out right over the top of the object here. Now, with that work path selected, we can choose the source as the work path. And we have only one option with a work path and that's to create a 3D extrusion. And we'll click on create. And once again, this 3D object consumes our grid pattern layer and it creates an extrusion. We can move it around. You can see that it's extruded. It's been drawn out. It has depth now. And the layer is actually the texture that's on the front of that extrusion. Let's undo that for a second. And let's see what happens if we add another path in here. So we'll choose the ellipse tool. And in this case, I'm going to go up to my options here and I'm going to choose subtract front shape. I'm going to draw a circle right in the center. And the net effect here is going to be that that hole is going to be subtracted from the larger heart shape. So if we again here choose the work path as our source and create a 3D extrusion, we'll click on the create button. And now we've got the same heart extrusion, but we've got a hole right in the center of it. And you can see that hole goes all the way through. And we've got the same extrusion material in the hole cut out as we do on the outside of the extrusion. So we'll undo that once more. Now we'll go ahead and get rid of this work path. We'll go to the paths panel and deselect it. And again with this layer selected, we'll go ahead and create just a random selection using the lasso tool. So there's my selection. And with the selection active, we can actually create a 3D extrusion from that. So here we can choose current selection. Again, we've got 3D extrusion as our only choice. And we click on create. And there's our 3D extrusion using a selection within Photoshop. So some nice, quick and easy ways of creating 3D objects. In the next episode, we're going to take a look specifically at these extrusions and we're going to talk about what is an extrusion, how does it work, and more importantly, how do we get it to work for us. I hope you'll join me in the next episode. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom tutorials and related information there. Or you can follow me at mhoffman2001 on Twitter and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.